Our first guest tonight is an Oscar winner, a ghost writer, and one of the most talented and fascinating movie stars of all. Next, he stars as Nick and Nicolas Cage in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It opens in theaters Friday. Please welcome Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm really, this is a big night for me. Is it? This is the, I know it's 420 and all that, yeah. but uh, <laughs> this is the first time I have been on national television on a talk show in 14 years. In 14 years? And I, wow. I waited for you and your audience. Well, thank you. Yeah. Can I tell you something, and this is no, I'm not blowing any smoke up you right now. I've been so excited that you've been, you're coming here. I've been thinking about it. All Thank week, you. and I've got a million things I want to ask Get you. Get into it. And I love fun. how you're dressed. You're dressed yeah, like a yeah. star. Well, I, I, uh, thank you. I was thinking, you know, I like to pair my clothing with interesting things. I was thinking, I, I feel like a little brushed aluminum on a dashboard of an old Cadillac. <laughs> and I, I went to a store and they had it, so I wore it. <laughs> And this is perfect. I know you live in my hometown, Las Vegas. I You've been do. living there for how long now? It's been about 17 years. 17 years. Yes. You made the movie Leaving Las Vegas, That's and right. then you didn't. You stayed. <laughs> and I didn't leave. <laughs> yeah. I went back and I stayed. Oh, Vegas has been good to me. It really has. It's both a small town and a big city. It's probably one of the most unique addresses in the world. Absolutely. If you want to go to the Strip and participate, you can. But if you want to just go with the locals and go to some of the cool restaurants, you can do that as well. And That's exactly I like how I d would describe it. Yeah. Living there, and I love that you live there. Do you live there for tax reasons, or well, originally? Yeah. 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 <laughs> originally, that's what right. <laughs> people go. Um, <laughs> but then I began to learn to love it. You know, also I've had great experiences making movies there. I mean, Leaving Las Vegas was great. Honeymoon in Vegas was great. Thank you. And there's good mojo there for me. So I like making movies. I I, I tried to get. Um, uh, a movie studio built there, and then Elon Musk came in, and all the money I got for the movie studio, I got $80 million, they put it into the Tesla Corporation, which then, ironically, drained all the water out of the city. So Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful, yeah. but I, I, I almost had it. I almost had a studio. You, uh, that's a, a lot of money to spend, so you don't have to take an hour-long flight to LA, that's for sure. <laughs> right, well, it wasn't my money. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah. a gambler? No. I oh, heard no, a story no. about you, and tell me if this is true. I have a few of these sure. stories I want to know. That you had $200. Yes. You uh, played roulette, you turned it into like $200,000. No, 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 nothing no. that extraordinary. $20,000. $20,000, yes. okay. Yeah, but I did it in about a half hour. And I was in the Bahamas. Okay. And it was one of those nights, do you ever have one of those nights where you feel like the mojo was with you and you knew you could just do nothing wrong? Everything was gonna go your way. I've never had that, I well, swear to God. <laughs> You will, but anyway. uh, It was one of those nights in my game, yes, my game was roulette, and it was about, I would say about 20 years ago. And I went into, uh, what's that big hotel in the Bahamas, the Atlantis? Or, oh yeah, the Atlantis, yeah. 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 And I went in, I went to the roulette table, and I just knew I had it, and every number I chose, and I often would choose the same number, it kept winning. And then the, even the woman that was uh, spinning the ball said, nothing sweeter than a repeater. And I kept doing it. And, <laughs> and I said, this is magic. I did it. I, I, you know, it happened. And so the next day I said, you know, this is so special. I, I'm going to go. I found an orphanage. I, and I lived across in Nassau Harbor. And I went, to, I found an orphanage. And I said, this is, I met all the, the children. And I said to the headmistress, this is for you put $20,000 cash in her hand, and I never gambled again because it would ruin the magic of that night. Never gambled again? Never gambled again. Wow. So, I, uh, wow. I, I, I ended it on a win. That's incredible. Unfortunately, those kids went and gambled it all away. <laughs> Gosh. I have a uh, uh, magazine, GQ magazine, you're on the cover here. Is this your snake? 
Uh, no, 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 I don't have any snakes at home. At no the, more uh, snakes. No more snakes. Did you at one time have a two-headed snake? I, I did. You did. Does that, does that make it impossibly strange that I had a two-headed snake? I did, no, it's weird. It is strange, it doesn't make you strange, but it is strange, I've never seen one. What happened, and it's odd. Yeah. <laughs> why I don't know, I was dreaming about two-headed eagles. Okay. And one night I had this, this dream, and then the next day, my manager at the time got a phone call saying, oh, uh, I've got a two-headed snake that I found in Northridge, and I think your client, Nick Cage, would be interested. And I won't mention how much it costs, because that's going to go everywhere. More than the orphanage got, or less? It was more. It was like four <laughs> times the amount. <laughs> oh, I should have kept that money. No, no I, um, I, um, I bought it. You bought it. I bought it. Did it have two names or one name? No, well, <laughs> it, it, no, I, I, the reptiles don't really care about us. They don't want us to name them. Okay. We're not part of their world. But, but I, it, they would fight, and one head was more dominant than the other. And I, why? It was like going to the same stomach. But I would have to put a spatula between the two heads to feed them, and it just got a little too freaky for me. <laughs> so, so I took it to the Audubon Zoo, and I said, this is for you. And they had a great time with it. I think they did name it. I don't know what the name was. But it, it lived for 14 years, and it died uh, just recently. So, wow. But it was, a good, it was a good time for the snake and for the folks that visited the zoo. Do your know? representatives get a lot of phone calls from people wanting to sell you strange I think, stuff? I think they, they, they've learned not if they do get the call, they learn not to. They don't tell, tell me you about anymore. It. They don't yeah, tell me about that's probably. Yeah. Do you have any pets now? Any unusual? Yeah, I, I, I have something. You, you want to talk about the unusual? I, I have a uh, uh, what is called an African pied crow, and he's very well dressed crow. <laughs> he's got black feathers and like a tuft of white feathers. This is for all you folks token up on 420. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he looks like he's wearing a tuxedo. You see. <laughs> And he likes to say hi to me when I walk in the room. He's very smart. And then when I leave, he says bye. I didn't teach him the words. He just came with the vocabulary. Wow. <laughs> and then one day, he called me a uh, a-hole. And I don't know why. It like just a, came out. Wait, like a parrot? Crows are able to say words? Yeah, they do talk, yeah. Wow. Do, I didn't yeah. know that. But they're, yeah. I know they're very smart. My neighbor had one, and it would come, like, visit and jump, like, right on your yeah, head. Yeah, he loves to do that. And hang out on your on head? Heads. Yeah. And I said, look, if you're going to go, he has a really big environment. It's like a geodesic dome. It's about 16 feet. And I say, if you want to go in and say hi, go ahead, but put these sunglasses on just to make sure your eyes are safe, because he does have sharp beak and talons and things like that. But no one's been hurt. So, so been hurt. when the guests come over, you say, there's a chance the crow may peck your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I think that's implied, but he, he, he's, he's very friendly. Was he's there nice. any crossover between the crow and the two-headed snake? There was no crossover. Okay, good. All right, good. All. Yeah, you don't want that. Well, no, this is I'm amazing. All right, not. we're going to take a break. When we come back, sure. uh, this movie, I absolutely loved it. We're going to see a clip from uh, Nicolas Cage's new movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, when we come back. We'll be right back. I'll never forget you, Ed. <laughs> I'll never forget you. <laughs> now you get the hell out of here. You go! <laughs> Mr. Cage? Javi? Buddy! Hey, where'd you come from? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out we could have just walked around. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? Whatever. <laughs> That's Nicholas Cage and Pedro Pascal in the unbearable weight of massive talent. I do want to, I don't want to ruin anything about the movie. I do want to say that you in that scene are playing uh, some version of yourself. Correct, yeah. Pedro's playing a guy, a, a guy named Javi, a mysterious wealthy man. Yeah. I'm not going to say what he does because right. maybe that ruins it. And you guys both take LSD and you have this journey together. Yes, exactly yeah. right. In that moment, we're both chemically altered. On chemically LSD, altered. On, on acid. Were you, and, did you have any hesitation about playing uh, a oh. character called Nicolas Cage in yeah, the movie? You have no idea. I would imagine you would. See, yeah. as an actors, we like to hide behind a character, but as soon as the character has your own name, it's a whole different ball game. And it almost never happens, really. It, it hasn't happened before, and it hopefully will never happen again. <laughs> um, 
I was terrified. I didn't know if they wanted to do some sort of an Andy Samberg SNL mock fest. And, right. Um, and uh, Tom, the director, wrote me a very intelligent letter. And I knew from his letter that he was a genuine film enthusiast. And he wanted to make a movie about people. Funny, it was absurd comedy, but also some hard strings, some nuance, some emotion. So I, I felt that I was in good hands. And, uh, and, it, and I'm very were, happy. I'm and happy. you can tell that Tom, what's Tom's last name? Gormican. Tom is obviously a huge, perhaps even like somebody you should get a restraining order against. <laughs> level fan. Well, he, yeah, I mean, I think he just loves movies. Um, I did ask Pedro about Tom at one point. And I <laughs> uh -huh. said, Pedro, uh, what's going on with that guy? And he said, well, he's, he's kind of like my character in the movie. He's kind of like Javi, you know, he's obsessed. Oh, yeah, so that's said, him. Okay, well, that, of course, relaxed me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do hope you guys see it in the cinema because I, I did see it in uh, South By at the film festival and everybody was laughing. It felt like the old days before the... It's you know, hilarious. It is it was, genuinely you know, hilarious. Thank it, you. And the chemistry between you and Pedro is fantastic. Yeah. Well, he's just a great actor. He is great. And you couldn't ask for a nicer man to work with. I mean, he's a really nice guy. And so that makes it easy. You know? you, um, can I ask you a couple more uh, like sure. legend, uh, Nicolas Cage legend questions? Yeah, you mind? I'm here. All right, Let's okay, here we go. I got one written. I've written some of these down because Diane Kruger was here a few weeks ago, your uh, co-star from National Treasure Movie. Yeah, she said uh, when you guys were working together, you bought a, a bat cave. And I don't mean the comic book bat cave. I mean like a cave full of bats. Yeah. Is that true? I like that you're asking me this question because it, it, it means I have to use one of my favorite words. Oh. Spelunking. Oh, yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> I had an interest in exploring all the elements. You know, I got my, uh, uh, my, uh, my, my certificate on the Great Barrier Reef. I explored the element of water. Air, I didn't really get as far as I wanted to. I wanted to be a hang glider, didn't happen. Fire, I felt like Ghost Rider. I had explored the element okay. of fire. And then I wanted to explore Earth, and I thought, yeah, you know, I want to start spelunking. I want to start exploring caves. And I think we were in, the, uh, in North Dakota in the Black Hills when we were shooting one of the treasure movies, and I said, I, I hear there's a cave for sale, let's go look at it. And I did, and it was beautiful, to, and this is good for 420, right? Uh -huh. All these stalactites, and, and it was all like this, like milky quartz, like crystalline walls, and I thought, I, you know, at the time I was married, and I was like, I, I'd like to be in the, it looked like Nagori sake, unfiltered sake, and I, I'd like to buy this and, and just go down in the bottom of the cave and, get totally naked with my wife and drink the glory <laughs> in the bottom of a cave in the earth. Uh, needless to say, I didn't buy the cave. It didn't happen. And there you were no bats. There were no bats in the cave. Did you spend the night in Dracula's castle? Yes. Yes, yes. OK. But the fact is that he never spent the night in the castle anyway. I think they just say that as a tourist thing. But I did spend the night Because he was, was up it. in the night, and he'd be sleeping in the day, right? <laughs> well, there, there's so, that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a fact. Were you stalked by a mime? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that, that is just so weird. Yeah. Because that, that is one of those things that made me <laughs> ask the proverbial question, why? <laughs> Why are you there? And there was two of them. Why are you guys two of them. acting out? They had the Marceau, Marceau makeup, and they were like mime slapping each other. And I'd walk, and I'm like, what are you, who are you people? Go away, <laughs> please. <laughs> In a way, we're all being stalked by mimes, right? Well, maybe that's what's actually happening. We're all being now stalked by mimes. <laughs> maybe they were just performing, and like everyone else, you didn't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think I was their only audience. I, I, please, will you please come back every week? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, this is fun, guys. I was 14 years ago. The great Nicholas Cage, the unbearable weight of massive talent, opens in theaters on Friday. We'll be back with Vanessa Bayer. If you like that video, click subscribe, and we'll be together until one of us dies.